Welcome to the Gun Plus Space Factory. I'm factory worker MS1251A and today we're going to be looking at this Badger 155 Anthem Airbrush and the Sparmax AC27 Airstream Mini Airbrush Compressor. These are an eBay find that I purchased together for I kid you not, just under 64 US dollars shipped. While browsing the bay a few days ago, I saw a listing for a Sparmax AC27 compressor for 44 bucks plus shipping costs. That alone was already a very good deal, but what really caught my eye was the airbrush pictured with it. I recognize it to be a Badger Anthem airbrush. Now, the Sparmax compressors alone aren't cheap to begin with, with some resellers asking as much as 235 US dollars for them. Now that seems a bit inflated to me, and I've seen these models in black advertised new for as low as 120 to 175 shipped. As for the Badger Anthem airbrush, these also aren't cheap. A kit with a hose and accessories will usually cost you somewhere in the $90 range. No matter the condition, a working Sparmax compressor and a Badger Anthem airbrush listed for $44 plus shipping seemed too good to be true. The description said the compressor worked fine but was missing some accessories, but the Badger 155 could not be tested. There isn't much that can go wrong on these Badger airbrushes and with parts being so cheap, I was sure if it was faulty, I could easily repair it. So after some thought, I decided I just could not pass up this deal and decided to purchase the combo. A few days later, the package arrived. Expecting the worst and hoping for the best, I quickly began unboxing it. The original box for the compressor seemed to be in very good condition. And upon opening the box, I was greeted with some extras. These I believe are stencils. Kind of cool. I've never really used stencils before, but I'm thinking I want to try these out on something. I really like the designs. The seller threw in accessories that were not included in the original ad, like these bottle adapters for the airbrush. Nice. And here is the Badger 155 Anthem. It appears to be in very good condition. It actually looks nearly new at first glance. There seems to be some of that pink paint dried up on the needle tip and inside the airbrush. It looks very well cured so I don't think the airbrush was flushed out the last time it was used. And the pullback action on the trigger is definitely seized. Oh yeah, that's really seized. It's not moving at all. There's probably a good amount of cured paint inside the nozzle gluing the needle in place. I mean, it's really stuck. The airbrush is going to need a good soaking and cleaning for sure. And here we have a Badger air hose. It looks slightly kinked up, but pretty much brand new. I mean, there's hardly any wear on it. I am slightly worried that the seize trigger might actually be worse than anticipated. It's not really budging at all. And compared to my nearly 20 year old Anthem airbrush, I mean, this trigger is super silky and smooth. Actually, now that I'm looking at both airbrushes at the same time, you can tell that Badger has changed a few things on the airbrush over the years. The letter engravings on the newer Anthem are much larger, and the trigger's also larger as well. My OCD is really kicking in. That trigger's super stuck and it's bothering me. I can't wait to get this thing disassembled. And last but not least, the Sparmax airbrush compressor. This thing is actually much nicer in person than I thought it would be. It looks to be in very good condition, but the airbrush holder seems to have broken off. The aluminum body has a nice anodized orange color and two chrome side covers. It looks and feels very high quality. The airbrush holder is partially broken and I'm wondering if I can fix it. As is, it's just kind of wobbly and it really won't hold my airbrush in place properly. At this point, I'm starting to question if any of this stuff actually works. The airbrush is seized and the holder is broken on the compressor. So I'm gonna get this hooked up and fire it up. I hope the compressor itself is actually in good working condition. I'm not gonna lie, I'm actually starting to worry because if this air compressor doesn't work and the Badger is busted beyond repair, well there goes 60 bucks. And 
and it works. It has nice pressure too. Well, I'm super stoked the compressor actually works. But now let's do something about the airbrush. So I go ahead and bring my tray here because I'm going to be using some harsh lacquer thinners to clean this out. Because the needle is seized and also due to the ball on the rear, I can't really disassemble the airbrush for cleaning. Instead, I'm going to have to partially soak the airbrush in cleaner. But before doing this, I will install a different nozzle cap with one with a crown protector. This cap is larger and will protect the needle so the tip doesn't touch the bottom of the glass jar. You don't really want to dip the entire airbrush in harsh solvent cleaners unless you remove the air valve. Solvents tend to destroy the small o-ring inside the air valve. I'm going to soak the airbrush in this stuff. As usual, I'm not wearing gloves because I apparently love living on the edge. Please wear gloves when handling stuff like this. Also be in a well ventilated room or at least wear a mask. So anyway, I will partially dip the airbrush like this and let it soak for a few minutes. After a few minutes of soaking in the lacquer thinner, the trigger has been partially freed I can also feel the needle moving a bit. The paint inside is starting to break up and now it feels like the needle is stuck in sludge. As you can see, some of the paint is starting to come out the paint intake. I carefully wipe the dissolved paint from the tip and nozzle as well. There's still quite a bit of sludgy paint stuck inside the airbrush. But now, I feel confident enough to start disassembling it. This footage is sped up a bit, but in reality, I'm taking my time and slowly disassembling the airbrush in hopes of saving the nozzle and needle. I pulled the entire spring mechanism and needle together in order to avoid getting all that crud inside that mechanism. A new nozzle and needle set is about 10 bucks plus shipping, but taking my time and saving these parts is much more fun and rewarding. After finally getting the airbrush disassembled, I used the thinner to wipe the rest of the old paint from the needle tip. You can actually see where the needle was glued to the nozzle by the paint. Now that the needle is much cleaner, I can finally remove it from the spring assembly. Next, I will again dip the airbrush shell in lacquer thinner. This will help remove the rest of the sludgy paint from the inner passages. I do my best to avoid getting any lacquer thinner inside the air valve. There is still dried up paint inside the nozzle and needs to be soaked as well. I use ordinary cotton swabs to scrub the airbrush. I keep repeating the soak and scrubbing until most of the paint is removed. The nozzle is a bit trickier to clean out. Since ordinary cotton swabs are much too large for the small opening, I find it best to use small toothpicks instead to scrub the inside. The cleaning motion should be very gentle. The idea is to use the toothpick to swish the lacquer thinner to dissolve the paint inside the nozzle. This process takes some time. I just keep dipping the toothpick in fresh lacquer thinner and repeat until the sludgy paint is finally dissolved and removed. You must be very careful though. Carelessly jamming a toothpick with force will enlarge or damage the nozzle. You must take great care not to do this. I keep repeating the soak and cleaning cycle. Mm -hmm. 
I use a small toothpick to scrub the areas where the cotton swab won't reach in the shell. Cleaning dried up paint from inside an airbrush is a very time consuming process. This process truly highlights the importance of cleaning and flushing your airbrush as soon as you're done using it. For the final scrub, I will use a set of standard spray gun airbrush cleaning brushes. These are small brushes that fit nicely inside the airbrush passages and will remove the remaining paint easily. And finally, after nearly half hour of soaking, cleaning and scrubbing the airbrush, the shell is finally paint free. The nozzle takes more time to clean, but eventually all the paint is removed. Once the toothpick comes out clean from the nozzle, you're set. And finally, I scrubbed the old dried up paint from the jar and the airbrush jar adapter. So the reason why this turned into a really long airbrush cleaning video is because I got a new camera and I wanted to make a test video to fine tune some settings and camera angles. What do y'all think? Let me know what you think in the comments below. And this is what happens when nitrile gloves touch lacquer thinner. They just start swelling and eventually melt. This is why it's important to wear gloves on using this stuff. Just imagine what it does to your skin. At last, cleaning is done and I can finally start reassembly. The airbrush should work, as these parts don't look to be faulty or anything, but there's always that uncertainty, what if, what if it doesn't work, especially after all that work. Yep, trigger should be fully functional now. It seems to be moving just fine. Yep, it's in full working order now. Feels normal. Feels nice. It 
it's time to test the airbrush. I load up the jar with a bit of isopropyl alcohol and hook it up to the compressor. Moment of truth. Aha! It works! Here, let me place this piece of black plastic so you can see the spray pattern a little bit better. See, it has a really nice pattern. Holy crap, this thing sprays like new. Wow, I really like it. I like the way it sprays and handles. This is so much fun. I can't wait to use this on a kit. I'm gonna call this one a success. Now I gotta do something about this wobbly airbrush holder. It looks as though one of the plastic pins broke inside the unit and it's still stuck there, which means I can fish it out. Access to the pin is relatively easy. The side panel is held by five Phillips head screws that easily come off. It might be hard to see, but there's the pin. It's stuck there. Uh, there's a cotter pin holding it in place, I think, as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and push that through the rest of the way. But first, I'm going to remove that little cotter pin so I don't lose it. With the pin out, I assess the damage and do a bit of test fitting. I'm thinking a drop of high quality super glue should fix this problem easily. So after applying the glue, I let this little plastic pin cure overnight before reinstalling it into the air compressor. I don't have any footage of reinstallation, but insulation is the same, just in reverse, so there you go. And just like that, the air compressor and airbrush are fixed. I'd like to close out by saying that if you're looking into painting Gumpla or models in general, youth high quality airbrush and compressors are a good option to explore. With a bit of luck and some work, you will find good deals like these out there. As usual, thank you all for spending your valuable time with me, and I hope to see you here on the next video.